The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Good morning, everyone, on this Monday, the 23rd of October, and we're looking at a very interesting market. Let me just go through a couple of things. Number one is the Dow is down 62 at 33,063. Hasn't taken out the 32,846 level, but now that I'm back in the office, I can show you all these charts. I just was a little afraid to do it the other day because... I was working on one laptop with uh, dozens and dozens of different windows. Didn't want to mess things up. So I'm always looking at straight line up, straight line down. That's one. Cup formation, or it could be a V-shaped formation, going from one level down back again to that level, testing the upside resistance or breaking it. Or there's an arch formation. So it's straight line, cup, or arch, or inverted V. And that's to me, that's all you have. So yeah, you go straight down and then you rally fail at a peak a or a b that's the first or second peak on the upside and come back over to arch and if that the reason why it's red is you take out that left side load decisively you can go a lot lower if you hold like you did over here or you know this is the reverse y pattern where you take out the left side high that's really positive in this case you see the arch for in the daily chart on the left is actually a little double arch but it's basically an arch that goes up to peak A, then a lower low goes to A and then B, and then fails and it comes all the way down. Yeah, you went to peak A to peak B, and now you're trying trying to find some kind of support holding above the 32,846 level. The other thing I look for is the nine period moving average over or under the 14 period moving average. I'll go through that in a moment. Let me just move this aside and say that that S means that the Dow weekly chart uh, slipped to negative so it's in a cell signal upgraded to a cell mode in the in the weekly chart the s and p daily chart s and where did i type that i'll type it over here s and p in the daily chart um just took out the left side low of 42.16 back uh, either beginning of first of august uh, or end of september Went to peak A and then a fractional B and then a fractional C, which is always negative. And now it's a C minus. Why? Because it made the dreaded H pattern. It took out the left side low. What, ha ha what happens next? It's not the end of the day. And it's a daily chart. So if it closes about 42.16, it's at 42.15.98. At least on a very short term basis, it saves the day. But you've got the arch formation in place and you've got in the daily chart for a while now. We've been in sell mode. Now the weekly chart on Friday at the close gave a sell signal upgrade almost immediately to a sell mode because it took out that it made for the second week. It made a pink nine period moving average. Pink means it's negative. Green means it's positive. And now we're going to see what happens next. Look at the QQQ. Finally, today, the weekly chart. And of course, this is a weekly chart. I can't talk about this as if the, the week is done because what 38 minutes or something into the uh, first part of the trading week can't talk about it as if it's closed but i can say on friday the nq that's the futures did close s that means the nine period moving average closed under it the qqq the index itself did not the investco qq trust is in fact the index 100 trading vehicle so this could still flip back because it's in the sideways range, but that weekly chart made a lower low, and this is in a sell mode. The daily chart, I'm sorry, the weekly chart, I have to consider that it's at least in a sell signal. I don't th say yet it's a sell mode, but certainly a sell signal, and the monthly chart is still pretty positive. IWM, the Russell 2, so I want to spend a little time on this because the beginning of the week, almost the end of the month, we're looking at the IWM, the Russell 2000, down $0.06. Cents. At 166.40, uh, within this big rectangle in the weekly chart for a long time, it's been in a sell mode. The monthly chart says, oh, I know this pattern so well. Wow, you better hold the left side low of 100 and, is that 58, 80 or something? I can't remember offhand. 162.56, 162.56. 
162. Yeah, 160. Oh, there's 160, right. 162. They better hold that in October and November because otherwise it's a real problem. Now let's do something else. I just wanted to quickly show you. The, so sell in all the key indices. That's the Dow, the S&P, the QQQ, the IWM, uh, the XLK, the SMHs. That's the semiconductor. I'm just doing that. Look, there it is. Uh, XLK, which is the S&P Select Tech Spider Fund. Yep, went to today. It's in an S. That was holding pretty well. But this is the beginning of the week. So all I can say is that the daily charts, sell modes, the weekly chart, I have to give it at least a sell signal. I haven't put the down arrow yet. But uh, we'll see if it upgrades to sell mode uh, over the period of the week. I, I see a buying coming in every day. There's buyers coming in, and then we close lousy. So let me just show you a couple of things that I wanted to go through in this overview at the very beginning. So uh, my, my subscribers to my opening call, it was such a perfect time to do an overview video that I do the hour-long video over the weekend, do it usually on a Saturday. I was out of town. I just haven't said I, I've almost got everything set up so that I can do it when I'm away um, from the office because I always have to go to my desktop because that's where my core or everything I do is right there. Um, and I, I log in. I've been logging in for 20 something years here at TFNM when I'm overseas and even before that uh, using uh, actually my PC, I think it is. Uh, so it's been pretty good. Uh, meantime, back at the ranch, I could not do the webinar. I could not do the video overview, but I did send out a very short uh, analysis written, typed up of what I was looking at. And I gave you all the scenario. I'll go through it as we move along. So gold, I said, gold is a uh, an icon of fear. That's where money tends to go to when there's geopolitical fear. Gold is also the place that um, money flows when the XLF in the United States, when the financial sector is really getting beaten down. So, yeah, in a sense, it's getting beaten down. But when you look at the monthly chart, this is not a major a major anything. It's just a sideways consolidation after making a high up in the 40s uh, a year, over a year ago um, and then all the way down to the 30 level. And now it's at 32. It's kind of arching over. We just got to watch this really closely. But so far, it's not the kind of got to buy gold because the financial, it's not like 2007, 2008, where everything seems to be blowing up. No, it's very different. So what we are looking at is gold, um, I think, is in play. I don't see the GDX, other than sudden spikes and then givebacks, uh, following through with this. So it might be more a gold play. Just gold itself is really important as a geopolitical icon of fear. The real icon of fear is the VIX. And the VIX index right now is coming back after hitting 23.08 and what I said to subscribers what's the 22s but my gut feeling tells me having been in this game for so long that it's really the 28 to 32 area in the VIX where we're going to say okay now we're getting a very serious upside reversal at this point it's a work in progress so the VIX index is in leg D but that's not the important when it comes to the VIX index and the Chapman Wave methodology it's the only one that I don't put great import into the lettering of the notation. And this is just pretty high in the 20s, pulling back to 21.18. I'll be right back. Dow down, Dow's only down 37, S&P's down three and a half. Right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. 
The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hi, folks. Uh, back again. So uh, in the pen, Jeff says, uh, Basil put the 50, 50 week on that chart. So I have here, look. Uh, this is on the SPY. Look, here's the 50 period. I use exponential, Jeff, so I'm not sure if you're using the simple or exponential. I love exponential. So look at the way the exponential, this is a dashed gray line right here. Let me get my pointer there. And it got repelled right there. And look at the 200 period moving. We're under the 200 period moving. That's never a good sign, all right? But there are times where that becomes a magnet, and I would not be surprised <clears throat> If uh, over a period of a, a few days, maybe the entire week, maybe we go once back to that and then we come down again. Um, so, yeah, I, I do use that. Most importantly, you remember, here's the, uh, that falling axe formation. This is an extension of the inside track repellent line. I actually really have to take it off now. It, it, it served its purpose. It's done. I don't like to keep things that are um, really obtuse and at this particular point. Uh, have served their purpose. So now I've got a new line in the sand, which is this, and that even that doesn't make any difference. So I'm getting rid of these lines right here, this line here, and I'm going to make this one short because it was important for that particular phase right there. And now it's done. It could come back, but at this particular point, I like to clean up the chart. So what we're looking at here is um, my suspicion is, and one of the reasons why I said to subscribe is, we flipped on Monday at just about at the opening where we took profits in our three times, a small three times. We've already been taking profits, took more profits, and then completely got out of the three times long UDOW, switched to the three times short SDOW. <clears throat> we still have the core short in the DOG from uh, the high of IDU, the high of the 1st of August, right there at the exact high. Um, so that's this is a core position for now. But most importantly, what we're looking at is, um, I said today, let's take, um, when I sent out the news at 8 o'clock or just before 8 o'clock, I said, let's take, or just off, I can't remember offhand, let me just check right now, got sent out 8.08. Um, I said, let's take some money off the SDOW, had really quick profits, took a 2.5% gain, and let's just, raise the stop and now we'll let it play out and that's all I'm doing right now so we've got a short position we've got an, a rather aggressive small short position in the Dow 
and we've got other positions, but right, and then the one position that we had, which is kind of upsetting because it's been so difficult. We have a, a position that we bought at 21. It is 68. We've taken nice gains all the way up, but we've tried to get back in for those who missed out, and I just haven't been there. I thought I timed it well because we got in the other day uh, pre-market, and then we, at that same position on Friday we got in, and it actually held really well, even bounced a little bit, but it got taken out today, and I suspect that by the end of the day, I'm going to say, oh, you should have kept it. But I, I'm sorry, we've got stops in. I'm not prepared to mess around. A couple of percentage points we can always make up. But when it gets to 15 and 20 percent, you're sitting there and you say, oh, my God, what am I doing if it opens down, if your wrong way around opens up? I, I just cannot do that for subscribers. Personally, occasionally, I, I might do that very seldom, but I might be so um, convinced that this is a particular position that's going to do what I wanted it to do. But I have to tell you, if I'm wrong, I'm out. Take my take take my loss, and I'm usually very smaller, and I just walk away and I say, okay, we'll be back. <laughs> I, I for me that's the best way. It's worked really well. I want to I want to preserve capital for my subscribers. That's just to me the most important thing. I want to stay in the game. All right. So now with that said, I got to gold and I moved away because I was talking about our icons of fear. One is the uh, for for gold. Gold is the icon of geopolitical fear. Um, when I'm talking about the financials, then gold comes into play again. But at the same po same moment that I'm talking about that, look at the dollar, DXY, holding pretty darn well for for days. It's been a week, in, uh, just over a week, and it's been stuck in this 106 18 area, 100, uh, yeah, 106 18, up a, up a, a tick today. And I, there's no way I spent some time over the weekend trying to count and see if I've got alternate counts in the weekly chart of the dollar. Look, the MACD is strong. The the stochastics at 80, 87%. That's fabulous. The uh, nine period is way over the 14 period moving average. The price is way over the nine. I, there's a chance. Wow, I, it's hard for me to say this. But there's a chance that the dollar, remember, I've tried to separate all these different things. There, there is a relationship, but it's very distant now of the dollar to gold. There is a, a relationship of the VIX to the market. Look, the VIX is in the 21 area, and yeah, the Dow is down 18 points. All those relationships are gone. The bonds. Look at this. The TLT. I've got a some kind of a low coming in. Um, it's not there yet, but look at this trend line. Look at how hit the monthly trend line. Exactly, and this goes back years, this particular trend line. Why? Because it's a trend line that goes back to 2020. And not only that, the TLT has this measured move. Oh, I didn't get, put it in. It was green. Why did I not change that? I forgot, I guess. Green. Uh, and it goes to there. But the U.S. bonds, which is the uh, uh, continuous contract, look at this beautiful, the low of... Um, August of 2013 at 109 and 8.30 seconds. That price always changes because it gets smoothed out. Is it still the same? 109 and 7.30 seconds. Huh. Oh, it got changed by uh, 130 seconds. Uh, anyway, the low of August of 2013, I didn't use the, the high of, uh, the 20, uh, of, the, of March of 2020 at 185. I used this particular low of October of 2018 at 123 as my fulcrum, as my plumb line. And what does it do? It goes all the way to next month. So it's within this period. I'm going to uh, 20, wait, 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 I'm talking about 10 years. How many months? It doesn't matter. 10 years from the August low of 2013 to where we are now, October of 2023, and saying this is the area. And you can see the plum the the plumb lines move, but the dash chap wave inside wedge target support line hit exactly. So we're right in this area. And I, I'm just suggesting to you that you've got to be a little careful here because within the context of bonds, if this whole area of support goes, there's really nothing. There's nothing until you get to the uh, I don't even want to say the the number, but I will. The f February of 2011, the low was 87. 
and we're at 109. So <laughs> let's just leave it at that. Um, so that's the continuous contract. So we are right in an area where I was. I believe that the we didn't from the action on Friday into the action Sunday night into the action this morning. This is not the low of any turnaround in the market. It is a low. It's just another one of those lower lows and probably lower highs. I don't think we're done yet. So let's just treat it as so an ongoing process. Now let's go back to gold just to show you something interesting. So gold is now down six at 1988. But look at that weekly chart. Um, the MACD finally crossed positive. Remember, we're looking at the negative mag mag uh, uh, MACDs from earlier on. And the stochastic said 49%, not very strong. On balance volume is pretty good. But that nine period moving average on the weekly chart, we're going to watch to see if it actually closes positive, and that'll be a big deal for gold. I'll be back. Dow's Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30 plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen, as well as many more. And he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30 year T bonds as they both influence Forex markets tremendously. When you sign up for the Tiger Forex Report, you also gain instant access to Teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted, Forex Strategies and Fundamentals, What is Behind the Tiger Forex Report. For all the details and to start your 30-day Tiger Forex Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn. And he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Hello, oh, welcome back. I'm just a kind of um, uh, to, to assess where we are. Look, the TLT having a bit of a bounce of 67 cents to be at 83.92. If you look at the TBT, it went above the left side high. It went to a leg F. I could give it an alternate count. I just don't, I don't want to do that right now because it is a D in the weekly chart and an E in the monthly chart. Let's just see how this plays out because if you look at the TNX.X, there we go. That's the 10-year uh, Treasury. <clears throat> this is the 10-year Treasury note. Uh, this is at 4.895, 48.95. 
and made a high high today. Now, is that a G slash C going to a D? That's what invariably happens in the Chapman wave methodology. So this is 49.96 uh, goes to 40.93, and today's high is 49.97. There it is. So now we've even got a D. So there are a lot of things that are right now saying we are getting closer and closer in bonds to some kind of a reversal. Could it be a short-term reversal? Could it be a longer term? It doesn't really matter at this particular point. But the way um, the prices are stretched, they don't know that they are stretched. So all you can do is look at the chart and say, well, the stochastic said 91% in the daily. The MACD is still good, not as good as it was in the previous peak, FTAR back in October, early October. But the 9 is way above the 14, and the price so far is way above the 9. For this to go negative, for the green to go pink, <clears throat> that's the 9 period moving average, you probably have to see the price at about 46, 42, somewhere around there, over two points lower. Um, that's a work in progress. But in the meantime, there is nothing here other than the price is red. On Friday, price was red, and today it's red, having made a new uh, recovery high. When I say recovery high, I'm talking about <clears throat> a high that is, goes back towards the high of uh, June of 2007. 2007. <laughs> I mean, really, look at the speed with which it did all that. I mean, that's pretty, that's that's quite something. So that says on a, on a um, using combustion, using your the talk that goes to momentum, the monthly chart of the TNX is making that M-shaped pattern that often says, just be a little careful. That's where you could get the right side failure, but you haven't got it yet. The stochastics are very good at 86%, 85 to 86%. That's very good. Uh, the 9 is way over the 14. So nothing here says that uh, you need to be worried about yields well, you should be worried about yields coming down. You want them to be coming down just at this point for a breather. But that doesn't mean to say the price has to do it. So all in all, it's a work in progress. And so far, there's just one little, uh, let's call it two. Let's call it as if the day has ended, but it's really only just begun. But at the moment, it looks like you've got two red candles. Woohoo! Two red candles in a row. You've had that before. Very tiny little candles uh, after that PE over there. So all I'm saying is that yields at this particular point are hinting that we're getting closer to some kind of a reversal, but that's all it's doing. And the trend, as far as I'm concerned, remains down. That's a, the down in um, the bonds at this particular point and in the general market. Now let's go to the other things we want to look at. Look, high-grade copper. High-grade copper is trying to form some kind of a base today. It's up a fraction. 0 0.0015 at 3.5645. It's just making lower lows and it's taking out the left side low. So nothing to see there. Wood, which is the uh, iShares Global Timber and Forestry ETF. It did exactly the thing that I was talking about, the inverted Chapman Wave um, falling axe formation, going to a peak D, which says you don't necessarily have to go far below the left side low. In this case, the low of 60... 8.75 back the week of the 24th of March. Um, we'll see what happens. It's at a peak D, and right now the price is at 69.74 in a leg D to the downside. The daily sell mode, daily sell mode weekly, and sell mode monthly. And that's timber and forestry ETF. That's a good clue together with crude oil. Uh, what did I, I want to show you? I wanted to show you something really important here. If you're looking at the various indices, look, EUR, USD. This is the currency pair, A, B, and it hasn't yet gotten to um, leg C right here. It's even an overlapping wave, which says it's going to 1.06398, takes you to a new leg D. And so far, it is rallying, and it, it, compared to the dollar, remember those relationships are not quite the same as they usually are, compared to the dollar, um, it's making slightly higher highs and higher lows, which is kind of good, yet the dollar is just holding very steady. JPY, uh, USD JPY. Look at this, almost like a little double top here. It's struggling, struggling. So this is going to be a really important week. Why? 
Because if the dollar, the XY, um, arches over, we'd be looking at a close below 105.54, and it's at 106.09. Doesn't sound like much, but in this particular instance, it, it is. The dollar doesn't move all that much. Uh, besides, well, I should mention we are along the dollar. We'll see what happens here because it's really important because the, the currency of fear is the dollar. When, when uh, geoeconomically and politically, when things are getting tough, money tends to flow to the strongest currency and, and it's still flowing to the dollar as I look at it. All right. So you want to look at uh, crude oil just real quickly and we'll finish this up here. Crude oil is down just a little down 84 cents at 87.34. Now it's just stuck in a range. You made your peak D. I'm going to draw in the rectangle here. So how long can it stay in the range? If the Middle East flares up even more, you will see crude oil move up. For That's just the way it seems to work with crude oil. Uh, it is a Middle East like gold. It is a Middle East. There you are. Part of the sectors that I look at when there's conflagration in the Middle East. Okay, that's that. Now, Meta, a question about Meta. So Meta is trading um, up 2.78 to 311. This is formerly called um, Facebook. I don't know why they changed the name. It made this cup formation. It's just, it almost looks like the uh, dollar yen. Look, just kind of dollar yen. Yes, dollar yen. Trying to bounce above this left side high in the cup formation. Remember what we're looking at? We're looking at H's and Y's. And there's the Y pattern. Up. And then a Y pattern. So how it holds and how it can close if it can above 331. And yet it is down to 311. I mean, that's a lot of points is going to be important. I just think Meta is kind of stuck. It's holding really well. If you look at the monthly chart, if you're long, I would just say, you know, as a long term buy and hold, it's almost like Apple in the old days. Just it's, in a, it's a platform that is seems to have substance. But in the meantime, it's in a digestive phase. I would not add to it. Amazon, uh, a little different. Look at this chart pattern. Uh, if I can give it to you, AMZN, AMZN. Yeah, this is the exact opposite. There's your H pattern. It's arching over. It looks seemingly like Amazon wants to test the 123, 200-period moving average. If it breaks that, then I would say 119 is probably what you're looking at. And I wouldn't be surprised if... if Amazon does, but 122 is the 200 period exponential moving average in the weekly chart. And to this week, it's just gone S in the 940, nine but the week has almost five days to go. So we can't talk about this if it's done, a done deal. I'll be back. They're going to be bounces. You'll see them. Here we go. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African RAND, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Are you ready to take your trading to the next level? Introducing Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, your key to successful active trading. Tom O'Brien, renowned for his expertise in the financial markets, has designed Market Insights to be your daily guide to profitable trades. Tom publishes his daily Market Insights newsletter every market day before the market open, along with updates when warranted. Stay ahead of the game with Tom's real-time analysis and trade recommendations delivered straight to your inbox. Whether you're a seasoned trader or just starting out, Market Insights provides the edge you need to navigate the markets with confidence. Ready to join the ranks of successful traders? Head over to TFNN.com and subscribe to Market Insights today. Don't miss out on this opportunity to supercharge your trading results. Market Insights comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee for all new subscribers, so you have nothing to risk. 
Don't miss out on this opportunity to revolutionize your trading game. Head over to TFNN.com right now to join the thousands of traders who have already experienced the power of Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, firsthand. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Hi, folks, we're back. Uh, let me just uncheck some questions that can a TYX. All right, I'll try to get you the TYX. Um, there, another question came in over here. Okay, I did that, I did that. Just just don't want to skip anything because it doesn't focus on focus. Okay, Dan, I'll get to that question over there. But first, I want you to show you something that is kind of important as far as I'm concerned. Um, Yes, Dell. So you have these companies. I remember looking at Hewlett Packard, HP. Was it HPQ? Let me just have a look. Oh, I typed it in here. HPQ? HP? Or was it HPQ? Uh, HPQ is... Yeah, HP Inc. And it just looked like it was dead in the water. And all of a sudden... It has this huge move going from the 26 level up to the 42s, and then it fails. And then I forgot about it, and I'm looking, and all of a sudden I see it had a, some kind of result or something, and it goes from the 24s down to the 34s. And I keep saying to myself, money keeps flowing into certain, certain fund managers have their favorites. And it can go back, not years, but decades sometimes. So Dell fits into that character. For those of you who know Dell, uh, what's his name, Dell, uh, you know, he uh, created this company, and it was an incredible guy. I remember I had Dell machines. I mean, many of you out there, I'm sure, had Dell, still have Dell. And then it just kind of disappeared because it was taken, well, either it was taken over or it was uh, someone, they joined with someone, whatever it is. It's still it. And then look what happens. It has this gap in September. Toodled in the 55 area, 54 area, 55, 54, 56, 54, 55. Boom. It suddenly jumps to 64. And then it keeps going up. And to this day, it hasn't taken out the gap up low, which is at 63.86. Uh, that was on the 1st of September. And here it is holding so well. So when you look at stories like this, and it's a story, I don't think Dell is doing something so fantastic. Wow, I didn't even realize that. Look at this monthly chart. Maybe it is doing something so fantastic. The new Dell from 2016, I guess it went pri private and then came back public, was tootling at the $10 area. And here it is, just of all time highs. <laughs> I look at, didn't look at this chart. So let me do, put it this way. If I look, if I just take a trend line and I take it from all the highs from the time that it IPO, the second IPO, over there, and I just draw in this trend line, look how perfect. How, do, how does a trend line know to do this? Uh, it's just, all I can say is, to me, it has to do with the tide. It has to do with the trend. And that trend just keeps having an acceleration from a certain base as the tide, it's like a boat, you're looking at the boat in the water, um, a little dinghy, right? 
and you were sitting there uh, on the bench looking out at the ocean. Oh, lovely, lovely. And you're there for about an hour chatting away. Look around. All of a sudden, that same boat is now either sitting on the, uh, on, uh, on the sand, right? It's, on, it's grounded because the tide has come, come all, gone all the way out, or it's up. And this is what I look at. This is a tide. Look, look at this channel. And this is the only way I can explain. There's no mathematical form. But I'm sure there is. I'm getting. I'm. I'm just about to start doing a little bit more work with AI, and I. I I'm going to try to do these things to see. You see this trend, this uptrend. So the uptrend says it has this kind of acceleration to the up to the upper resistance level, and then it fails, and that's exactly what it did here. Now it's starting to slow down to the upside. Um, so I, I just. I wanted to explain it in my own verbal way. It's not a mathematical way other than the tide is rising and the, in the physical response of the stock to the emotional buying runs out as it gets to that trend line and it's within an up channel. And that's just make it as simple as possible. All right. So I don't know what the question is other than to say if I was looking at this, I don't know, is this a computer Dell? I mean... Why would it be doing so well other than takeover rumors? Look what happens to takeover rumors. Look at X. It gets this takeover story, and it does unbelievable. This is from August, two to two, two in the 22s. Suddenly, 28. The low is the next day is 28.05. It runs up to 32.52, and then it goes into a rectangle, does not take even, gets doesn't even get close to the low, that 28 low. It moves high, breaks to the upside peak, A, B, C, goes to a D right there on the October, I think it was the, 20, uh, the 12th or something, October the 12th, and now it's in a sell mode. And there's a chance that it's to come back, and I don't know if it will break the 28 level, but it's already at 31. So I think that whole area of 31 to 30 is going to be very important for U.S. Steel X as a symbol. So with that said, let's go back to Dell, and I'll say whatever the story is in this economy, in this environment, I just don't know what the reason would be for Dell to go from 68, 65 to 72 and a half to break to a new uh, all-time high. It won't just be a recovery high. So is it a short you know, it's just stuck in the range. Whatever the story is, it's still holding. When it breaks, it's going to not only fill this gap, it's probably going to go down to the 200 period moving average of 52. It hasn't even done that yet. So I'm not sure what the question is. Uh, let me see if I can go back. Uh, I, oh, you bought puts. Okay. Um, my sector work this weekend has computer hardware at high risk. Okay, I'm with you 100%, but I'm not sure I'm with you 100% on Dell unless the uh, puts a little bit further out. If you're looking at um, November, you've got 3, 10, 7. Oh, yeah, you've got time. Okay. To the 17th of November, that's fine. Okay. <laughs> it's a lot of work there just to answer the question. So, yes. Uh, next one is question I had was where did I go? 200 period moving average to, oh, hat tip to Basel. 10 which, oh, oh, thank you very much, uh, Z. Uh, let me just have a look at this. I did want to get to it. Yeah, so this has gone to G slash C, alternate count. There's never an H, so that goes to a D in the one-minute chart. Look, there's your D. And then it goes to an E. Pulls back quite sharply. This is the one-minute E-mini. Goes to a cell signal to a cell mode. Has a decent value. I think it's going to be – this is not the Monday, October, um, the kind of smash to the downside reversal and become the low like we had in uh, October, uh, how we March of 2020 where we went along the day of the low, or October we went along the day of the low um, of last year. This is different. This is just a bounce, and it's using up time and energy to waste to the upside because eventually when the low comes, I think that VIX is going to go into the 28 to 30 area. So, yeah, this is – actually, I see if we can be moderating all the selling – over the next, uh, what are we, 10, 10, uh, 10, 50? Yep, 10, 50 right now, 10 minutes to 11 Eastern time. We can still go to 10, 62 in the 10 minute chart. So with that said, look at that five minute now it's stalling. I'll be back, Dallas down 36.
You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFM. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Hi, folks, we're back. So, in this last segment, I, I want you to give an overview of what I'm looking at. Let me just say, number one, uh, the August 1st high in the Dow, uh, the day we were in short, I'm trying my best to keep that as long as possible, right? That's number one. Number two is we are still short the SMHs from two points of its all-time high. That was on August the 2nd, I believe it was, two days after the high was made. Um, here it is at uh, 142, we shorted 159. We've had the SOXS as a three times short periodically. We just didn't have it in this particular pullback, and it did go right. Look at this. Look at the beautiful work here. It went right to the Chapman Wave inside track repellent zone. And I tell you, I, I still firmly believe where the SMHs go, so the general market goes. Just They are the oil of the 1900s. This is the oil of the 20, 20, 20, 1900s. This is the 2000s. Um, and as important in everything that we do. Right. With that said, bonds, bonds are, they look as if they're headed higher, more intermediate term. But on the very short term basis, I believe they're trying, at least trying, to implement some kind of a, a, a level uh, in the uh, TLT in the 82, could even go down to 81, could even have one quick slip into the uh, uh, 79s. But I think we're getting real close to where Bonds at least give a relief rally. But 
what, what I'm really interested in here is, uh, so a question came in uh, just now about the FXI, which is China. So I'll just do that real quickly. Yeah, it still looks very weak to me. And the other thing is, uh, what do you do? Oh, what do you do with the uranium stuff? Yeah, we still have our UEC. This is the uranium energy core from the uh, 360s. I'm showing right now at five. You have to take some gains off, but it's holding really well. And that's called energy. So with that said, I'm going to hand you over to Steve Rhodes. It's be a great program as always. Steve, the uh, host here at TFNN Tech Outlook Performance.